after previous lecture now we are aware of the skull and most of its part in this video we will study the skull from the superior aspect that is norma verticalis see it's norma verticalis it is the view of the skull when we see the skull from the superior aspect that is from above when you keep the eye above the skull let it be the skull when you keep the eye above the skull the view which you get is called superior view or norma verticalis and when you look at the skull you will look it looks like this it is oval in shape the skull is oval in shape and we have different sutures about which we will talk one by one the first suture which is present on the anterior is coronal suture this is the coronal suture and we can see this is the anterior part of the skull and this is the posterior part of the skull and anteriorly this skull is a bit narrower as compared to the posterior part of the skull when we look from the superior view so anteriorly this oval shape of the skull looks narrower and posteriorly it is bit broader this is the coronal suture and here we have sagittal suture and after this sagittal suture here we have another suture called lambdoid suture this is the coronal suture coronal suture this is sagittal let me write in short form only sagittal suture and this is the lambdoid suture. and one more suture is present but it is only seen in about 3 to 8 percent of the individual actually this is called the metopic suture this is called metopic suture and this is only present in 3 to 8 percent of the individual normally this metopic suture should fuse at six years of the age but in 3 to 8 percent of the individual this suture is also present now you may mark these sutures on your diagram and then we will move further and other than sutures we have many other features also we will talk about each of them one by one we must also keep in mind that all the structures in norma verticalis is present in the vault of the skull or the calvaria vault of the skull or calvaria which is the armed roof of the skull about which we discussed in detail in the previous video see one more structure this is the when you keep this pen here you will the tip this part of the pen will touch the highest point of the skull highest point of the skull and that is called vertex when this let it be a skull and when you put the skull here when you put this pen at the highest point of the skull it will touch a high highest point and that highest point is known as vertex mostly it is present few centimeter behind bregma now we have to understand what is bregma this point this point this point at which this coronal suture and sagittal suture meet is called bregma this is called bregma and the point at which this sagittal suture and lambdoid suture meet is known as lambda since this suture looks like lambda letter lambda which is like this so this that's why this name lambda comes from comes here it is the point now bregma we discussed about it that it is a point at which coronal and sagittal suture meet but in case of fetal skull in case of fetal skull this is the site of membranous gap and it is called anterior fontanel fontanel word means space and it looks like this see we see that these bones doesn't meet here and there is a membranous gap and this membranous gap is known as anterior fontanel fine and it mostly it closes at 18 to 24 months of the age that is after birth and there must be so if this fontanel is present there must be some function of this fontanel yes there is function very important function of this fontanel it allows growth of the brain it allows this fontanel since the brain is this the skull is not fused so it will provide space for the growth of the brain since bone is not a uh, bones are not fused which bones this frontal bones parietal bones are not fused so they won't restrict the growth of the brain which is present inside this skull fine when the brain is developed properly then the fontanel fused to form the structure called bregma then the 
structure is formed this is called bregma fine we have one more meeting point of the suture that is between the sagittal suture and the lambdoid suture and in fetal this is called sorry not in fetal say in adult stage it is called lambda and in fetal stage this was also the site of membranous gap and that gap is called posterior fontanel that gap is called posterior fontanel and this gap looks like this this is called posterior fontanel and in this fontanel there is no actual meeting what is fontanel there is no actual meeting of the bone it is covered by a soft membrane this is covered by a soft membrane and this posterior fontanel closes at birth from that is the time period is between from birth to 2 to 3 month of the age see if fontanel fuses early then the volume inside the brain will be smaller and won't increase or won't allow the brain to grow such children in which this occurs that is fusion of fontanels before the actual time which is required those children are less intelligent now if you palpate the anterior fontanel and you find it's it is bulging when you try to palpate the anterior fontanel that is in the child this is the anterior fontanel and you try to palpate this part above the skin and you find it bulging that means there is raised intracranial pressure what is intracranial pressure the pressure inside the cranium is raised if that is raised then you will feel that this part is bulging and if you find it depressed when you touch here and you find it it is depressed that means that there is decrease in intracranial pressure and the reason the reason can be dehydration so during normal delivery of the child you can you will find this during the normal delivery of the child the pressure is applied on the head pressure is applied on the head in order to pull that child from the mother's womb since there is a space in the form of fontanel since there is a space in the form in the form of fontanel so the bone overrides or move over each other without trauma to the skull bone see what happens when the pressure is applied here in order to pull the child out of the mother's womb then what happens these bones override on each other like coincide and doesn't cause any trauma to part of the any there is no fracture in the skull why because there is a space which is taken by or by these bones and after the fontanels we have some after studying this fontanel we will also study about some of the prop the proper eminence like parietal eminence this parietal eminence is present somewhere here this parietal eminence is present somewhere here here you can feel even you can touch your head and you can feel there is a eminence see the eminence or you can say tuber not tumor it is tuber is the area of maximum convexity of the parietal bone so that's why it is called parietal parietal eminence and since it is more prominent and more bulging and if a person falls this is the surface or eminence will be first to strike so among all of this this is also the one of the common site of the fracture of the skull what parietal eminence there are two parietal foramen on the both the side of the sagittal suture here both the side of the suture we have the parietal foramen so there must be something passing through these foramen we will study about that here first let me complete this diagram yes so there are there are parietal foramen on both the sides of sagittal side of the sagittal suture and if you want to precise its location then you have to learn that it is 2.5 cm to 4 cm in front of this lambda that is distance between this two point is 2.5 to 4 cm and here this parietal foramen transmits an emissary vein from where transmits emissary vein from the veins of the scalp that is scalp is the layer which is present above this skull from scalp to superior sagittal sinus as it is not possible for me to explain how the emissary vein is transmitted from parietal foramen to the superior sagittal sinus on the board so i took the help of this app here on the screen we will see the parts that is what are different part in this diagram so here we see this is the this is the frontal bone this is the parietal bone this is bregma this is coronal suture lambdoid suture these both are the parietal foramen and this is sagittal 
suture and the point this point is known as lambda this point is known as lambda and this bone which is present or the part of the sinus which is present between the two parietal foramen that is here is known as obelion and here we have one more suture only in 3 to 8 percent this is known as metopic suture which mostly gets fused at six years of the age but in some individual it may remain now on looking see on looking the skull that is calvaria from the lateral aspect we have the layer of scalp over this calvaria this is the scalp layer scalp is made from all the skin which is present on our head connective tissue blood vessels this comprises the scalp and blood vessels let it be the vein which comes from this scalp enters this parietal foramen enters this parietal foramen and the blood blood vessel is known as the emissary vein that blood vessel is known as emissary vein and enters from this side and on the another side it enters into the sinus that sinus is known as superior sagittal sinus that sinus is called superior sagittal sinus now let me explain you how the superior sagittal sinus looks like see this is the parietal foramen and through this parietal foramen what enters the emissary vein reverse this calvaria like this when you reverse this calvaria like this here you have the parietal vein and when you look on the another side you can see the parietal foramen is here and through this foramen emissary vein comes out here also emissary vein comes out and enter the shaded part this shaded part is the this shaded part is known as superior sagittal sinus this shaded part is known as which is present over the brain and the emissary vein which connects this scalp and this superior sagittal sinus fine from this norma verticalis we can also see the part of temporal lines we can see the part of temporal lines this is superior temporal lines about these we can see these temporal lines in the norma verticalis but about this in detail we will study in norma lateralis so till here we studied all the bones the sutures which we are able to see in norma verticalis